welcome to our SIP Fundamental Series. Today, SIP lead developer Kieran Moran will introduce parameters. The next key section we're going to talk over is parameters. And as I mentioned, they are ways of passing input to a configuration. Um, you can, by all means, add default values and they are not required. If you miss that default value, then it will become a required parameter. But we also support the ability to reference other things as well. So this is quite handy if you have a parameter which by default would actually be the same value as something else, but you might want someone to override it at a later point in time. Um, for example, we have the ability to set a prefix on our installs, so everything we've identified as a something website or something solar core, but you might want your solar cores to be something different occasionally. So you would have a reference between the two, but you still allow someone to override the solar prefix. So each one of these, as I said, you can add those in there as well. We've got the description, which only comes up uh, if it's a required parameter, but it helps in the configurations to describe what you're hoping the person's going to provide. Um, if you have it as a parameter that's required, you can press question mark exclamation and it will give you the information on the console. The only absolute required thing you need to put in there is a type. And the type is telling the user and the, the engine itself what you are expecting to come in. So it can be a string, it's basically a .NET type. It can be a string, it can be an int array, it can be an int, it can be a hash table. And at the command line, when someone provides it, we will type that value that they're passing in to match up to that. So if they try to pass in a string when you're expecting an int, it will throw an error at the command line for you. Parameters, pretty much what you were just looking at. We've got a default value, a reference, and a uh, third fold down here, which doesn't receive anything. And what you can see down the bottom here is we're passing that through with what we call our config function syntax. So my next slide, so I'll go into that deeper shortly. Um, but it's just a way of saying, I want to use a parameter called first folder. And so we know that we'll use the parameters that are being passed in at the top there. So let's clear our screen. And we're going to run our parameters. I've got a required parameter, so it's giving me that information again. And you can see there it says type exclamation mark question mark. That is default PowerShell syntax. So it's not particularly user friendly, but that's what they have. And you can see the description that's come through from the configuration there as well. So I'll just call this one number three. And again, we can see it's gone through. And you can see in the output there, I've actually got two SIF parameters being created. And the reason for that is because the second folder references the first folder. So if I run this again, and I say second folder, and you can see I've got um, tab completion for the parameters there. We use PowerShell's dynamic mechanism to bring those to the console. And I say other. And I've got to give a third folder again. So let's type three properly. You can see now that I've been able to override that, even though it was originally referencing things as well. So parameters, nice and simple, immediately allow you to get input into your configuration and increase its viability to use in other places.